So welcome everyone. We're gathered here in the sight of God and these witnesses to unite Douglas Brian Nowitensky and Amanda Jean Weaver in the covenant of marriage. In Genesis, God said it, it's not good for a man to be alone. I'll make a helper suitable for him. So Doug and Mandy, you are so blessed to come to the marriage altar with the approval and blessings of your family and friends. Who has the honor of presenting this woman to be married to this man? Her, her mother and I do. Beautiful. Go ahead and get you right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Doug and Mandy are now about to vow their unending loyalty to each other. We ask you to accept the shared treasure of their life together, which they now create and offer to you. Grant them everything they need, that they may increase in their knowledge of you throughout their life together. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now, Doug and Mandy, as you prepare to take these vows, give careful thought and prayer. For as you make them, you are making an exclusive commitment, one to another, for as long as you both shall live. Your love for each other should never be diminished by difficult circumstances. It is to endure until death parts you. As God's children, your marriage is strengthened by your obedience to your Heavenly Father and His Word. As you let God be in control of your marriage, He will cause your home to be a place of joy and a testimony to the world. Now to uh, honor Mandy's family and by her request, you're going to note throughout the uh, ceremony that we'll be incorporating elements of a traditional Jewish wedding. To start with, the structure that you see over us right now is called a hoopah. It represents a Jewish home symbolized by a canopy and four poles. You can see that it is open on all four sides as a symbol of hospitality to one's guests. The wedding canopy lacks furniture as a reminder that a Jewish home it's more about pe the people within it than its possessions. Now, Doug built this canopy. Now, there was some blood involved in that. Uh, apparently, his dad helped him a little bit and ended up there with a machete accident, but I won't go into that. So, um, Doug built this especially for today's ceremony and celebration with the understanding that marriage has divine origins. It was God's idea. And as we stand under the hoop of today, we can sense God's presence and covering over the covenant of your marriage. Now, what I know about Doug and Mandy. Now, Doug I met, you know, I don't know, a long time ago. He was about two years old when he came to my uh, little Sunday school class that we had together in the church we were going to at the time. I'd already met his parents at a Bible study, but there was little Doug and his little smiley face. I don't think he ever has a problem with a smile. You know, he just smiles all the time. And that's been that way since he was a young boy. And then throughout the years, we'd bump into each other, especially when he would be, oh, you know, spending some time with Emily, working as a server for, for both of their parents, you know, in various different events that they did, you know, catered events, those types of things. And then later on, as I you know, got reacquainted with Doug when he was in college, and we would meet downtown together and have coffee and talk about God things, and, you know, he was kind of, re kind of trying to figure out what was going on with his whole relationship with God. And uh, shortly thereafter, I got invited to a birthday party. And at that birthday party, it was about four years ago, is when I met Mandy. And Mandy has just been a wonderful pleasure to get to know you. You know, one of the things that I know about Mandy is that she has a, one of the sweetest and kindest hearts of just about anybody that I know. She has great unconditional love for almost everybody that she comes in, touch, in contact with, all of her friends and her family. Now, the way that shows up in Mandy's life, other than just the friendships, is basically she tries to rescue every single creature on the face of the earth. You know, she just goes and gets them and you know, tries to find homes for them. She'll bring them all home. And of course, Doug doesn't mind that at all. <laughs> now, I've had a, the privilege of uh, spending about eight or nine weeks with uh, Doug and Mandy, um, going through premarital counseling with them. And, I can't tell you what a wonderful time that was been for me and for Linda as well. Very, very special. So, right now, Doug and Mandy, I'd like you to turn around and face your guests. 
this part is really for you folks in the crowd. Doug and Mandy <clears throat> um, have already turned around and looked at you. Uh, take a look at your friends and family out there. Friends and family, I want you to take a very close look at Doug and Mandy. As witnesses to the vows they're about to take, I charge you to make sure that if and or when anything comes between this couple, that you remind them of the vows they took this day and that your expectation is that they will fulfill them. Okay, do you think you guys can do that? Yep. All right, good, good, good deal. You guys can come back this way. Doug and Mandy, the covenant which you're about to make with each other is meant to be a beautiful and sacred expression of your love for each other. As you pledge your vows to each other, and as you commit your lives to each other, we ask that you do so in all seriousness, and with a deep sense of joy, with a deep conviction that you are committing yourselves to a dynamic, growing relationship of trust, mutual support, and caring love. Remembering our time together in your premarital counseling, the thing was asking the question, what if God designed marriage to make us holy more than to make us happy? So on that note, every bride and groom, past, present, and future, needs to know the difference between a legal marriage and a biblical marriage, the difference between a marriage based on contract and one based on covenant. America is a contract-oriented society. We like contracts because they have loopholes and bailout options. It's fine to live by a contract, but we must love by a covenant. The modern approach to marriage is focused on personal rights and needs. I deserve to be happy. I'm entitled to have my needs met. If this relationship ceases to give me what I want, and it gets tough or real boring, I can walk away. After all, marriage is a contract, and contracts are made to be broken. Society views marriage as a social contract based on self-gratification, a commitment based on convenience, a terminal contract that promise to love, honor, and quit whenever I want. You know, it's easier in the U.S. to walk away from a marriage than from a contract for 24 hour, excuse me, 24 hour fitness. Marriage has been called the least binding of all contracts. So listen carefully. God never intended for marriage to be a convenience-based contract that we could easily get out of, but a character-based covenant that we would be committed to for life. Now God knew we couldn't build marriage on lust, physical attraction, feelings, or a private contract. Long-term marriage demands, demands more than a piece of paper. It calls for the merging of lives and the binding of hearts. Contract is about legalism and leverage. Covenant is about love and loyalty. Contract is for as long as you both shall love. Contract Excuse me, covenant is for as long as we both shall live. A contract calls for the signing of names. A covenant calls for the binding of heart. A contract is writing your name in ink across a piece of paper. A covenant is writing the name of your mate across your heart in blood. So listen, guys. Doug and Mandy, to marry in covenant is to form a bond strong enough that a mate's heart can rely on it and a child's heart can count on it. When it comes to marriage, the world has it all wrong. Covenant is the only adequate foundation on which to build a lasting marriage. When you enter into covenant marriage, you are saying, I am yours by covenant, and you are mine by covenant, <clears throat> and no one, either one of us is going anywhere. For marriage is a contract, you see your spouse as he or she is. Faults, flaws, foibles. Every irritation can become huge. You assume the word. If your marriage is a covenant, you see your spouse not as he or she is, but as he or she can become. You assume the best and you overlook imperfections. The contract magnifies faults. A covenant covers faults with love. Now, a true covenant marriage is always a threesome God, husband, and wife. Now, Mandy, as a little girl, I'm sure your mom taught you how to braid your hair. And from time to time, you probably still break your head. You learned how to weave three strands together with a tight hold, beautiful, and stayed in place. The third strand holds the other two. It's the same with a rope. Three strands are better than two, or four, or five. The third strand is constantly touching the other two. It is the strongest and the tightest. In covenant marriage, God is the critical third strand, husband, wife, and God. 
As Solomon, the wisest man to ever live, said, a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Covenant marriage, as divinely planned, is a binding together of three persons, a man, a woman, and Almighty God. As long as you stay in close contact with each other and with God, you have an unbreakable bond. Three things you may need to know that you can't give apart from the power and the grace of God. A love that is unconditional, a forgiveness that is unending, and an attitude that is unselfish. Covenant love is a tenacious love. It never lets go. It never gives up. It never quits. It holds on with bulldog tenacity, regardless of what the other partner does or fails to do. Unconditional covenant love overrides feelings, fickleness, and even failures. So now, Doug and Mandy, you've made a very serious and important decision in choosing to marry each other today. We're entering into a sacred covenant of life partners with God. The quality of your marriage will reflect what you put into nurturing this relationship. You have the opportunity to go forward from this day to create a faithful, kind, and tender relationship. We bless you this day. It's up to you to keep the blessings flowing each and every day from this point forward. We wish for you the wisdom, compassion, and constancy to create a peaceful sanctuary in which you, do, in which you can both grow in love. So Doug, do you understand and accept this responsibility? And do you promise to do your very best each day to create a loving, healthy, and joyful marriage? Beautiful. Mandy, do you understand and accept this responsibility? And do you promise to do your very best each day to create a loving, healthy, and joyful marriage? Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys can face each other now. Match your flowers with them. Okay, Doug and Mandy have decided to write their own vows. And so I hope that Doug didn't forget them somewhere, but I'm pretty sure he has it right there. <laughs> Why don't you go first, Doug? You will never be alone past year. We walk this path together. I bind myself to you eternally. By like God, I am yours, you are mine. I give you the sunrise and Now repeat after me. I take you, Mandy, to be my wife. Now, Mandy, you've got some vows here that uh, We have some rings. <laughs> okay, the wedding ring is a symbol of eternity, an outward sign of an inward and spiritual bond which unites two hearts in endless love. 
And now as a token of your love, and of your deep desire to be forever united, your heart and soul, you dove may place a ring on the finger of your bride. And repeat after me. Mandy, Mandy. I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and faithfulness to you. Now we have a ring for the other side. By the same token, Mandy, you may place a ring on the finger of your groom. <laughs> Too much water. Good? Right. Repeat after me. Doug, I give you this ring as a symbol of my love and faithfulness to you. Well, now that Doug and Mandy have given themselves to each other by the promises, vows, and rings they've exchanged, I pronounce them to be a husband and wife in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let me have one final prayer here. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turned his face toward you and give you peace. Now, Doug, you may fish your bride. things to do here. Oh, would you like to hold on to that one? Don't spill it, but I think you do. Uh, the wine glass and the breaking of it is going to conclude our ceremony today. The purpose of which is to bless the couple in a final prayer. And at the breaking of the glass of this foot, we're all going to cry out Mazel Tov and we congratulate Doug and Mandy. So, does everybody know how to cry out Mazel Tov? Okay. We're going to have a little practice session. You ready? This is just practice. Okay, I'm going to count to three. And everybody out there is going to say Mazel Tov. One, two, three. Mazel Tov! You guys can do better than that. We'll try it one more time. One, two, three. Mazel Tov! All right, I think we got it down. We're going to pray now. And then after that, Doug is going to, Doug and Mandy are going to each drink from the glass. And Doug will wrap it up. And when he gets ready to smash the glass with his foot, we're going to cry Mazel Tov. Okay? So let's pray. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, sovereign of the universe, who created joy and gladness, groom and bride, mirth, song, delight and rejoicing, love and harmony and peace and companionship. Soon, Lord our God, may there ever be heard in the cities and in the streets voices of joy and gladness, voices of groom and bride, the jubilant voices of those joined in marriage under the bridal canopy, the voices of young people feasting and singing. Blessed are you, Lord, who causes the groom to rejoice with his bride. So Doug and Mandy, take a little drink from this wine. You're probably going to have to take a pretty good-sized drink here because it got filled up with this wine. Let me get that cloth. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, We'll do, a, we'll do a three count. One, two, three. Oh. 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 All right. And now my, may I introduce to you for the very first time ever, Mr. and Mrs. Douglas and Amanda Joachansky. Yeah.